Hello and welcome to Arirang News. It's Friday, October 7th here in Korea. Live from Seoul, I'm Han Dan. Intelligence from South Korea and U.S. reportedly seems to indicate North Korea may launch another long-range missile soon. Increased activity has been detected at the North's main missile launch site just three days before the country marks the anniversary of the founding of its ruling Workers' Party. Our Kim Hyun-bin talked to a leading expert on the possibility and reasons for a launch. Two days before North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's birthday on January 6, Pyongyang conducted its fourth nuclear test. Just prior to his late father, Kim Jong-il's birthday in February, it launched an intercontinental ballistic missile. And then, on September 9th, to mark the 68th anniversary of the regime's establishment, North Korea conducted its fifth nuclear test. Many experts believe there's a high possibility the regime could conduct a large-scale provocation to mark the anniversary of the founding of North Korea's Workers' Party next Monday, October 10th. Along with its nuclear capabilities, North Korea could use an ICBM as leverage against the U.S. The regime needs to prove that its KN-08 missile could actually be used as a long-range weapon. To enhance its ICBM technology, North Korea could launch an ICBM or a satellite rocket to enhance its projectile and rocket propellant technology. Last month, Pyongyang tested an enhanced rocket engine, fueling speculation that the regime could launch another ICBM in the coming weeks. North Korea claims it wants to put a geostationary satellite into orbit, although many experts believe that's a smokescreen for building a long-distance missile, and that the regime will continue to test its ICBMs. To perfect its ICBM technology, the North need to conduct several missile launches and nuclear warhead tests. I believe Pyongyang could perfect its ICBM technology as soon as one to two years from now. Senior military officials say they spotted an increase in activity at the Dongchangni launch site, adding to the speculation that a missile launch could be imminent. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. South Korea's top diplomat says it's time to consider even harsher measures against North Korea in response to the regime's continual provocations. Speaking with Seoul-based Yonhap news agency in Brussels on Thursday, Yoon Byung-sae said encouraging countries to sever or sharply limit diplomatic relations with Pyongyang is an effective way of punishing the North. He noted that an article in the UN Charter says all UN members should enforce non-military measures like severing diplomatic ties when a country ignores its international obligations. The minister added that dialogue should only resume once Pyongyang shows a clear will to abandon its nuclear weapons. He also addressed NATO members at the North Atlantic Council, calling for a, quote, holistic approach on North Korea issues, including its human rights violations. Minister Yoon and NATO Chief Jens Stoltenberg agreed for stronger cooperation during separate talks, uh, during which Yoon expressed his appreciation for NATO's statements on North Korea's threats, of which there have been five this year alone. Samsung Electronics' third quarter earnings estimate have topped expectations despite a global recall of its Galaxy Note 7 smartphone. According to the company's earnings guidance, operating profits stood at 7.8 trillion won or nearly 7 billion U.S. dollars during the July to September period. That's up about 5.5 percent from a year ago, but down over 4 percent from the second quarter. Sales came to 43.9 billion dollars, down more than 5 percent from a a year ago. The operating profit beats a recent market consensus by roughly $300 million. Analysts say a pickup in Samsung's chip and display sectors uh, likely offset losses posted by its mobile arm. The global recall of the Note 7 is estimated to have cost Samsung roughly $1 billion. The tech giant has been offering replacements or a refund after some reports of the device catching fire while charging. Samsung's finalized earnings will be announced later this month with a breakdown of performance by sector. 
Regions affected by Typhoon Chaba this week are bracing for more severe weather from tonight through Saturday morning. Heavy rain is forecast in the southern regions overnight, including Gyeongsangdo and Jeollanamdo provinces, as well as Jeju-do Island. More than 80 millimeters of rain are expected to pour down on typhoon-hit Ulsan and Jeju-do, while up to 120 millimeters of rain is forecast in some mountainous areas, accompanied by thunder and lightning. All this as rescue workers, police, the military and volunteers battle the aftermath of Typhoon Chaba. Authorities are warning about the possibility of landslides and flooding, so take the necessary precautions if you are in those areas. The latest round of bad weather will come around 72 hours after Typhoon Chaba killed seven people and left three others missing in Busan, Ulsan and Jeju Island. The cleanup costs are expected to rise into the millions of dollars. The government says it'll come up with a detailed restoration plan by the end of the month. And that does it for this edition of Arirang News. Thank you for watching. Business Daily is next.